Thank the organizer for providing this opportunity to present you our uh, res results of TR7 agonist. Uh, I would like to acknowledge the key contributors um, of my fellow Roche colleagues, as well as the external investigators who contributed to both the results in the mice, as well as the housing volunteers. So in Roche, we're aiming to develop a combination therapy uh, to achieve the cure of hepatitis B. And to do that, we are hoping to combine either direct antiviral that can have profounding effects on HBVD suppression and or profounding effects on lowering the HBV antigens with immune enhancers. And among the immune enhancers, we feel that TR7 agonist is one of the bridge between the innate immune response and adaptive immune response that could provide benefit in the future combination therapies. We have designed specifically an inactive form of TR7 agonist that is a double prodrug. After orally administration of this compound in vivo, it can be uh, converted through metabolism in two steps. The second step of oxidation that will lead to the conversion of the active drug. The enzyme responsible for, for this conversion is highly expressed in the liver, and therefore the active form of this compound will appear in the hypothesite first. So we have demonstrated that the active forms of compound can trigger TR7 response in the, cell, in the reporter cell lines, as well as at much weaker activity to trigger TR8 response. So this compound can induce interferon alpha and other cytokines in the ex vivo study in the incubation of human PBMC. So this compound currently has been proved to be safe and well tolerated in the house volunteers with a favorable PK profile in single and multiple ascending dose up to 170 mg. We have demonstrated previously a proof of concept in the mouse AAV HBV study that when we combine the TR7 agonist with a core, allosteric, a core protein allosteric modulator, uh, the Roche version of very special class one modulator, uh, we could achieve in this mouse model that a sustained response during the off-treatment of S antigen loss in five out of seven animals. And we could also observe in this combination, there's appearance of anti-S anti-hepatitis, uh, anti-HBS antigen antibodies. And this is only happening in the combination between the TR7 agonist and the CPAM. And therefore we thought that the response of the Im immune response to the generating antibody is attributed by the TR7 agonist. To study the adaptive re immune response in the mouse, we have observed the responses in the germinal center B cells as well as in the spleen after the oral treatment in the every other day dosing schedule of this TR7 agonist for four weeks. You can see that there has been a significantly increase after the treatment of TR7 agonist of the germinal center B cells as well as HBS antigen-specific B cells in the spleen. And also, an increase of the t interferon GAFA positive CD8 T cells in the spleen. Data is now showing here that we could also observe uh, the increase of the interferon GAFA gamma T cell numbers in the liver. So these are consistent with an adaptive immune response that's triggered by TR7. To prove that, we have evaluated the differences between wild-type mouse and the skid mice, which are lacking the T and B cells responses. 
after the infection of HVV, HPV. As you can see, in the wild-type mice, the TR7 agonist monotherapy could re reduce HPV DNA as well as HBS antigen, even though not as profounding as in the combination therapy. However, in the skid mice, we could observe that such effect has disappeared. And this is not because the differences in either the drug exposure or the innate immune response that can be measured by mRNA or other interference since they were comparable. Even if we dose up in the skin mice uh, at 300 mg per kg, we still did not see similar efficacy effect. So this indicated that adaptive immune response that's triggered by TR7 has played a key role in the efficacy we observed in mouse. However, such adaptive immune response especially in, in the tissue, it's quite difficult to measure. And therefore, uh, we still seek for the peripheral markers that indicating the response that triggered by the TR7 agonist. As you can observe here, that there is a dose-dependent response in terms of upregulated MRA response that's after the TR7 treatment between 12.5 mg per kg to 100 mg per kg. You can see the increase of expression level on MX1, OS1, as well as ISG15, but not on the TNF, SF10. And similarly, you can see that interferon alpha has been upregulated in a higher dose of, with the TR7 treatment. In contrast, we did not find a specific um, TR8 cytokine marker such as the TNF alpha in this mouse study. So this serves as a basis of our TR7 signaling uh, that we can use as a biomarker uh, to look at in the human studies. Just to provide an update on our status of the TR7 human trials, this molecule has been dosed in healthy volunteers in a single ascending dose between 3 to 170 mg, followed by a multiple ascending dose in an every other day dosing schedule for two weeks, from 100 to 170 mg. In the second part of this fifth one study, this molecule has been dosed to nuke suppressed patients in every other day dosing schedule at 150 to 170 mg for six weeks. So these three cohorts have been completed. And some of the results will be reported in the upcoming AASLD uh, this week. So what we have found for the PK profile in human is that there has been a dose proportional exposure between 3 to 170 mg in the SAD and MAD studies. And what we were aiming for uh, was a relatively fast appearance. As you can see, the Tmax is at a median of half an hour, which is fully cleared within 12 hours post-dose with a T-half around three hours. This is exactly what we were looking for when we're designing this molecule. We want to have the trigger of the immune response and, and the drug not be accumulated in human. After the two weeks of dosing, and you can also see that there has been no accumulation of the active drug in human. Uh, what I want to point out is what we measure here the RO1785 is active form of this compound that can appear quickly after the oral dosing. So from the pharmacodynamic responses, we have measured a panel of the activation markers in the serum, 
including interferon alpha and other cytokines, and the expression level of several mRNAs in the whole blood. We could start to observe the appearance of the interferon alpha following a single dose, starting at 100 mg. And as you can see, there has been three subjects with the increase of interferon alpha in the 100 mg dose cohort. And given an example of the subject one, you could observe this temporal response of the drug, the active drug, followed by the interferon and other mRNA markers. And we could observe that at higher dose level, there are more responders, as well as a greater altitude of the response, highlighted here by the photo of change and the subject of the responders. Over the two weeks QOD dosing schedule, we could see that there has been a maintenance response. So these highlight all our desired properties of the PD response of this molecule. So in summary, we have observed a novel project of TR7 agonist that demonstrated desired PD response in both mouse and human. And we're looking forward to see further exploration of the therapeutic effect in combination. Thank you.